Raise your hand if you've put your hopes, your ambitions, your dreams on hold because you lack the confidence to pursue them. We've all missed opportunities or given up on our dreams because of your failure, lack of confidence, performance anxiety, or self-doubt. We berate ourselves for not being courageous enough, smart enough, God forbid, to go after the things that we truly want. So we resort to quick fix solutions such as self-esteem boosting, motivation, positive affirmations, relaxation techniques, etc. But these only provide temporary relief, right? To truly build confidence, you need to understand the underlying psychology of confidence and its cycle. Lucky for you, I have the sauce. Hi, lovely people. My name is Leila, and on this channel, I talk about personal development, inner work, and my life in South Korea, where I currently reside. Today, we will dive into an issue I tackled right off the bat when I embarked on my personal development journey in uh, January 2018. At that time, I was struggling with lack of confidence. The devastating ripple effect affected all aspects of my life. I'm talking relationships with men, my work, my quality of life. I did not go after what I truly wanted and settle for what I thought I deserved. And uh, trust me, when your self-confidence level is low, you don't believe you deserve much. I've always wondered, what would I do? Where would I be? Who would I be if failure were not an option? I had my answers, of course, but I just didn't know how to go about getting the desired results. Then I stumbled upon a book at a thrift store that forever changed my life. It is The Confidence Gap by Russ Harris. And in this video, I want to talk to you about two types of confidence, share the five reasons why we lack confidence in the first place, and discuss the confidence cycle and how to get great at anything. So let's dive in. Success in life requires a clear purpose, and building genuine confidence is no exception. You need to start by creating a list of things you wish will happen as you cultivate your self-confidence. My list in 2018 had intentions in 10 different categories, but let me just share two with you so you have an idea of what I'm talking about. In the category ways I will act differently, I put, I will stop drinking alcohol just to be tipsy and free from my insecurities. Instead, I will remain in the moment and find joy in it. In the category things or activities I will start to do more of, I put take myself on solo dates once a month and learn to enjoy my own company. I also put something else, which was go to that bachata club alone, enjoy the class and the party afterwards, even if my friends were not coming with me. I naively thought I needed to feel more confident to get everything I wanted. Girl. I remember this moment vividly when I said that Pachata challenge, I was fine in the days leading up to the night. It was a Monday or Tuesday. When the day came though, suddenly my mind started playing tricks on me, coming up with excuses to postpone, to do something else instead. At the time, I had no accountability partner to check on me and make sure I would go through with this. All I had were the advices in the book and the author's assignment. I remember telling myself, this is the first challenge. If you fail now, where do we go from there? How can I trust you moving forward? From that moment I started getting ready to the moment I arrived at the club, my heart was racing, my palms were sweaty. I don't know how to explain it, but my whole body was like literally fighting everything. My voices, like the voices in my head were fighting. Some like super positive, encouraging, some wondering the hell I was doing. It was a crazy shit show. Then I get there, I pay, I start the class, and when I tell you I had a great time, a great time was had. Like, I'm telling you this story because I learned something super valuable that day. It is crucial to learn how to manage the gap between the moment we decide to do something new and scary and the moment we actually do that thing and enjoy it. That gap cannot, like, you cannot jump over the gap. You literally have to go through it. But I'm getting ahead of myself, so let's uh, let's rewind and backtrack. Russ Harris said that we are in the confidence gap when achieving our goals, doing what we want, or being the person we want is impossible because we believe we need to feel more confident. But what is confidence? Before reading the book, I've only known one definition, that confidence was a feeling of certainty or assurance, like brushing my teeth. If you ask me to do it, I won't panic, right? It's not going to be like um, the bachata situation. I will do it effortlessly. 
And that what most people associate confidence with, this cool, calm, collected feeling of deep knowing you can do something. But there's another definition, lesser known, but also powerful. When I read that, a whole world opened up to me. That definition of confidence refers to it as not a feeling of certainty, but as an act of trust and reliance. In Latin, con means with and fidere means trust. A great way to explain that is when you trust a surgeon to operate on you, you personally don't have a feeling of certainty that everything will go well, but you certainly trust the surgeon to do a good job. That is the second definition, confidence as an act of trust. The surgeon, on the other hand, because he's done this procedure countless times, feels confident about his ability to do a great job. That is the first definition, confidence as a feeling of certainty. The action of confidence come first, the feelings of confidence come later. The mistake we make is waiting for this confidence, like this feeling, to come to us before we do anything, not understanding that if this thing we want to do is new and challenging, that feeling will never come until we actually do the work. What we should do instead is the action of confidence, relying on ourselves, taking action over and over until we start noticing the feelings of confidence. You don't know how to play tennis, but you can trust yourself to hold a racket. You can trust yourself to hit a ball, no matter what the direction, uh, you know, the, the direction it comes in. And that is what matters. Without trust, you start the confidence cycle. You take action, you learn, you get better. Let's talk about the main reasons why people lack confidence in the first place. So you have excessive expectations, harsh judgment, preoccupation with fear, lack of experience and lack of skills. I wanted to revisit this topic so early in the year, I wanted it to be my second video because of one of my biggest insecurities in 2023. The thing I lack confidence the most in was my Korean abilities and the reasons were number one to four on the list I just gave you. I had fluency expectations for a language I only studied for a year and a half in language school. How insane is that? I harshly judged myself whenever I felt frustrated with Korean. I had a fear of making mistakes, annoying people with my hesitations, looking dumb, and not being able to express myself the way I wanted. And I lacked experience because I ran away from most speaking opportunities. Oh, just thinking about it just makes me cringe. I'm entering 2024 finally accepting that I cannot jump from one side to another without going through the work. I released that burden associated with the four reasons previously mentioned, and I am sure my confidence will increase as I go through this intimidating and uncomfortable process that is learning Korean and speaking Korean and everything related to Korean. And it was important for me to go back to this book because again, I got it in 2018 and uh, I've marked this book with, I don't know, there's so many colors in the book. I wanted to go back to it and just remember and remind myself of the confidence cycle and, um, and just realize that with Korean, it's exactly how it's gonna have to be. And I just need to be okay with the discomfort for a while and not berate myself and then just go with it. I released that. And um, it also happened around the time where I had this big Korean exam for, anyway, that's a long story. But yeah, December, December 30th, that's when for some reason the burden just went away and I felt so light and I'm excited for 2024. Excited, excited. Okay, so I guess my question is, what are the things you haven't started because you're waiting for the feeling of confidence to come and hug you so you can do it. Because if there are such a things in your life, let me just tell you, it's not gonna come. Like that feeling is not gonna come. You're gonna have to get started. So what are we starting in 2024? Let me know in the comment section or if you wanna keep it to yourself, just think about it. And um, yeah, I hope it's gonna be okay. I hope we're all gonna be okay. It's exciting. And um, yeah, thank you for watching. I will, um, I will see you in the next video. And in the meantime, take very good care of yourselves. Bye.